Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish. And I'm not. Oh, How no. are you? And yes, I'm dying to know. Yes. And that's Trish and I'm Tracy. <laughs> Is that right? That's right. Because right. I get us mixed up. Yeah, everybody People gets get us, mixed. us mixed up. We've um, got a good video today. We have. I like what we're talking about today. Yes. We're talking about things people might not know about the funeral industry in general. So not necessarily in the mortuary, yeah. but just death and funerals and stuff. Mm. And just stressing, this is in Australia, in Brisbane, yes. Queensland, Australia. So rules are different all around the world. Rules yeah. are different all around our country. Yeah, just in Australia, they're different. We're just giving you a little advice what happens here in Brisbane, Australia. Queensland, <laughs> Australia. Australia, mate. I, I'm nearly got an Australian you nearly got it. accent there. Yeah, maybe they'll know your name once you <laughs> develop an Australian accent. Anyway. You, you know the first time I came to Australia and asked for a la latte? So can I have a latte? And, and they went, a lager? <laughs> it's, a middle, it's morning time. I went, not a lager, a latte. And in the end I went, I'll have a cappuccino. <laughs> and she's drunk cappuccino ever since. <laughs> Because I couldn't. That's funny. Yeah. Well, anyway. Anyhow, never sorry, we digress. Okay, so we're talking about things that people might not know about the industry. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I guess I'll start us off. Yes. One comes to mind yes. is that, and I didn't know this, in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, apparently, according to people in the know, i.e. you, um, you can take your loved one home and have them at home for a few days without embalming them. Uh, you can. Well, it happens quite often, actually, more often than you think. Yeah, you don't have to be embalmed. But uh, here in Queensland, it, especially in the summertime, we would say, you know, maximum of two days on a cold, on a cold plate. But we'll talk about cold plate in a minute. Um, you know, unembalmed. Uh, in the wintertime, maybe three, four days, you know, but you can take them home. And you do not have to have them embalmed as long as there's no, you know, major trauma already happened at death. Cause and as long as they've been found straight after death. Yeah, yeah. And, and so so little Betty's in the nursing home and uh, she's just passed away and the family go, do you want to take it to the funeral company yet? We want to take her home for a day or two. Then they can. They can. There's no rules. The laws here say that you can't do that. So there's a cold plate. You can hire an, a cold plate, and we've touched on this before. It was a podcast we did. Yeah, with Jan the end of life doula. Yeah. Hmm. So um, there's a cold plate for um, you can get them for babies and adults, which is basically just excuse the noise in the background. We've got some work going on here while yeah. we're filming. So basically, it's just like um. A plate that's called a, a tray. It's a tray, you know, like when you get in your catering, you've got your, your hot plates and your cold plates. It's a similar thing, isn't it? It's a tray and it's a cool plate, and you place your deceased on them, and that can, uh, can keep them uh, preserved for a couple of days. And often in that situation, you guys from the mortuary would go and check on that body yeah. at the person's home yeah. every day just, just to check what's just happening. Just for the changes in the, you know, the process of death. So that we, you know, the body is still decomposing. It's not in a cold storage where it slows it right down. And we do ask the family to keep the air con on and, you know, keep the room cool and keep the windows closed to try. And also another thing we always tell the family is basically put a, a mosquito net or some kind of net over the uh, the person so that just keeps all the flies out because flies will will know, they'll know and they'll get in somewhere so you know and a lot of people do that that's not a problem it's you know but while they're in the room with them they can take that off and spend the time and then on the evening put it around them and and so when you drop in in the mornings to check the body you're looking for purge yeah looking for signs of purge and distension whether gases and fluids if that's starting to happen now i've got to say it doesn't happen all of the time instantly where we start to get purge and the tummy's distending going full larger of gas. full of gas yep. yeah it sometimes may not happen for a long yeah. time, even though the process is de if you, the normal process. If you uh, read up about uh, the process from the day you die, is usually two or three days we'll get that gas and build up. But sometimes there's no gas building up at that point. As remember, we've got orifices everywhere where gas can escape from. So you know, yeah, the, you know, can seep out. So okay, yeah. so number one, you can take your person home in That's... most most circumstances, and these guys are the ones who will advise you if you shouldn't or you can't or yeah. you need to embalm before you do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, second thing that people might not know. Uh, so we get a lot of questions because we've got a lot of viewers from all over the world, 
and we get a lot of questions, especially particularly in America, is um, I think majority of people in America that I know of, that we've heard about, are embalmed. Uh, but here in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, that's not the case. We don't embalm everybody, and I certainly don't. Em my embalms are nowhere near a high percentage as what they are around the rest of the world, or even Australia, maybe. So you but might only do one a week? Uh, if that, you know, you know, it's a one a month or a couple of months or... So not everyone's embalmed? Not everybody's embalmed, so, and they don't need to be embalmed. The reasons people get embalmed is, one, if we're doing a repatriation to a different country, so the person's going to fly to another country, they're going to be buried in an above ground vault, so... Or a crypt? In a crypt that's not below ground. Um, they're going home for a long period of time, uh, cultural reasons, or the family just request it, you know? So, you know, we don't need to, especially here, because um, we, I know in the UK and other places, their funerals can take up to three weeks to happen, which is uh, sometimes they're the advised to embalm. Hey, our funerals take place within a week of death, you know? Generally. Or generally, sometimes mm. within two or three days of death. Yep. So embalming is not necessary a lot of the time. I personally, and a lot of people that I know in the area, don't embalm every day. 90% of my day is natural preps, wash, mm. dress, and then the coffin. Okay, I'm going to bundle two together now. One is you can have a natural burial, and you can explain why that is. We actually have a video on that, so yeah. I might point to that video there. Yeah. But Trace can give us a quick little rundown. Yeah. Uh, and you don't have to have a timber coffin. Yes, yes, you don't. Yes. All right, explain. Okay, so a natural burial is um, basically no chemicals on the body whatsoever. So basic wash, dress, if the person wants to be dressed, or we would recommend a biodegradable shroud, you know, which breaks down naturally. Made um, from hemp? Usually wrapped in a shroud, a hemp shroud, like you said, and sometimes buried as that without the coffin, but sometimes with a coffin, but the coffin is has no, it's a pine coffin with no metals, it's, um, it's a bit, it's a similar thing to what the Jewish have. The Jewish have these Plain. coffins that have yep. no added. Yep. So that's, or you could have a wicker coffin. Or you could have a wicker coffin, yeah. So that's like, and so you're in natural, the natural burials are in bits of bushland where you're in trees and you're in, and it, it's marked out by GPS coordinates. So you don't actually have markers where, the, you know, it's not laid out like a normal burial site where you've got your your burial with a headstone and everything it's all in the bushland or in it's beautiful and it, isn't it? it is gorgeous we've got one we did a video on um with tim and he showed us around it was a, it's a really nice area so and the reasoning behind that too is that there's no maintenance needed so yeah. you don't it's natural regeneration back into the yeah. bush you don't um you know have to use weed killers you don't have to use whippersnippers or what do you yeah. call them in the uk um, lawn mowers and um, uh, hedge trimmers. Hedge trimmers and that and sort of thing. Like so you don't need any things. intervention. You put in the ground, the uh, natural bushland is allowed to sort of regrow yeah. over where yeah. you are. And yeah. that's that. Yeah. So they're options. Yeah, and you don't have to have a timber coffin. Well, apart from natural burials, so mm -hmm. finish talking about that now, just yeah. in daily general death care, yeah. you don't need to have a timber coffin, do you? No, you can have a cardboard coffin. You can have a cardboard coffin. I oh, love that option. I love that option too. Cardboard. And you can decorate it. Well, the cardboard coffin is a cardboard box. It is a box. Uh, it's not shaped, coffin shaped or anything. It's, a box it's just a box shape. It's oblong. And you uh, can draw on it. You can write on it. And we do have white ones as well, if actually they want to be used for viewings or uh, actually at a service. And they families can write on them, draw on them, colour on them, write little staple messages. things on them. Yeah, put hmm. things on them. I've had families come in and staple pictures and uh, children's artwork all over them and, you know, cover the whole thing in all kinds of stuff because they so they, they love ones taking all, all that of that with them, with them all that because love. it's all, you know, and it's yeah. really quite lovely. So, yeah, cardboard. cardboard. And you could also just be in a shroud. You can be in a shroud. In some natural. places, there's different regulations yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. You can in be natural. in a wicker coffin. Mm -hmm. Wicker coffin. You can you can have all sorts of coffins. Uh, but uh, there is a metal coffin that you can be buried in, which uh, you obviously can't use for cremation. Because you can't cremate a doesn't, metal coffin. Doesn't burn. Yeah. All right. So what's another thing that people might not know about funerals or death care? 
Um, I think a lot of people don't realise is they can actually dress their own deceased. But they can wash the deceased and dress them. We've had that a lot in a lot of family dressings we do. You can yeah, you do, do lots of those, don't you? Lots of family dressings. So mm. I basically would prepare the body for the dressing and we'll go into the viewing room and we've got a hospital bed where the person will be placed on that hospital bed and the family do the dressing. And then they'll even coffin sometimes. As long as the person's not really large because they'll pick, you know, the, I've had lots of family members in a row where they're all going pick up um, grandma or, you know, mum and then carry them and place them in the coffin which is really lovely because they all get to yeah. hold on and it's really you, you can see the yeah. you know that final moment that they're really really you know yeah. it's special to them because that's their moment that they're doing it all so yeah so and yeah, you're there in those situations just to help give them tips on like how to get the arm through a sleeve when it gets yeah, stuck and that yeah, sort of thing yeah yeah because it's funny because they'll start watching and I'll say I'll describe it as it's like dressing a baby they're not going to help you in any way you know, they're not going to behave in the way you think, you know. So it's just giving them the tips of how easy it is to get a... Once you get one sleeve in, the second sleeve is always the hardest. So how you do that, make sure you put your belt on your trousers before you put the trousers on because trying to get the belt underneath is a pain in the bum. So, yeah, so things like that. So, yeah, you can dress okay. your own loved one. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Uh, what else? You do not have to have a funeral service and you do not have to have... A funeral company looking after your loved one. You can do it all yourself. You can do it all yourself. There are some legal requirements, obviously. There is legal Different requ wherever you are. Yeah, legal requirements. You have to have paperwork, you know, that shows that um, if you are doing it yourself, you have to have the paperwork to show that, you know, the body has been buried or cremated, whichever one you want to do. So that's so, a legal requirement. It has to be disposed of within the realms yeah, of yeah, legal requirements. Yeah, legal requirements. You need yeah. the paperwork. You need a death certificate, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you do, yeah. So um, that's the only things you would have to organise yourself, which is what a funeral home does. It does all the legal sides of it. You know, we, we organise the cremation and the paperwork and we organise with birth, deaths and marriages. We organise the death certificate with them. We'll organise the burial, you know, um, how big the plot is, where your plot is what you where you know and there's a stuff. lot of logistics yeah and, and sometimes it, it, that's why a lot of people use funeral homes because when you're in a time of loss trauma you you person your loved ones just died and you know you're like it's, it's just sometimes easier to and the other home. thing too is you guys know where to go to do all that stuff Absolutely. Me, as a lay person just out in the world if I picked up a phone because somebody god forbid that I love's died I wouldn't know where to start that's so right. there's all of that as well. Plus, the industry, if you want to call it that, is set up for funeral homes to do that smoothly between themselves and between the authorities and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So if I was to ring and say, oh, I've got, you know, my person at home and mm -hmm. they've deceased and I need a, a Form 9. Yeah. But yeah. you can do it. And you can also go to these guys for advice. Yeah, absolutely. You can and ask. just do the bare basics with you and then handle all the rest of it and yourself. handle it yourself. Yeah, yeah. you can. So That's you can, an option. You can do that. Yeah, it's your option. It's a pain in the bum, I would think, because we have the connections. And see your loved ones has to go to the coroners for whatever reason. There has, there has to be there. Then you're going to have to deal with the coroners and, the, you know, the release of when you can get the release for the body and all. We already have the relationships with the coroners and um, the authorities yeah. already there. So we have legal things already in place where we just call and we need to say, oh, we need a form 14 and form 3. And, and, and you know, and we're, they're like, OK, you know, Done. so and if you're doing it yourself, it's just a bit more, you know, going around the red tape with everything. Yeah. So but you can do everything yourself if you yeah. wish. Yeah. OK, what else? Oh, uh, what about after cremation ashes? Oh, the ashes, mm. yeah. So there's lots you can do with ashes now, isn't there? There's a heap of things you could do with ashes. Mm. Yes, we can do tattoos with ashes. You can have your loved one made into tattoo ink yes. in some places and yes. uh, used to make a memorial tattoo. Yes, you can. You or can paint. Paint. You've seen that before. We have seen that before. So mm. you can put them in paint and do... And make a picture. And make a picture. You can make diamonds. Diamonds, yep. Mm. Out of your ashes. Or forever. Yeah, they are yeah. forever. So you can have um, diamonds made out. And when we say ashes, we know that they're not all ashes. Like they're cremains, yeah. they're cremated remains. So two yeah. different things. Um, we've yeah. talked about that in videos before. Yeah. If you're unsure, watch our video on cremation. Yeah. And um, 
Fireworks. Fireworks, yes. Go yes. out with a bang. Yeah, go out with a bang. You can do fireworks. that. That's a nice idea. Yeah, and also we have the um, uh, earth urns. It's got the soil and everything in with a tree. Hmm. So you can plant that in your garden and put yeah. your ashes in with that and plant it and a tree grows. Well, you could do it just in a normal pot. Yeah, well, you could just do mix that. the ashes in with the potting and mix. And put it in with your roses hmm. or wherever you want in your yeah. garden. So there's all kinds you can do with yeah, ashes nice. these days. So there's a lot. And you can get them made into paperweights. Can you? Yeah, if I've seen that where they put ashes into paperweights and yeah. things. So all into glass things. So yeah, cool. you know, so there's a lot of things you Lots can do. Lots of ideas. Uh, some more, some more, some more. Oh, yeah, you can be buried with your pets. Oh, okay, well. Not alive. No. No. And as long as they died at the same time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah. the ashes of your pets. Or the ashes of your pet, which is more common. We get a lot of people like um, the wives take the husband's ashes or the husband take the, the wives' ashes or, you know, or whatever, children's ashes. You know, relatives go with them and all that kind so instead um, of just scattering the both lots of ashes of, say, mum and dad yeah. together somewhere uh, after they've both passed, mum can actually go into dad's coffin if dad's the last one to die and then they can be cremated together yeah. and then be scattered. So, That's right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, yes, and... And uh, pets, um, yeah, we've yeah, talked we've about... Yeah, we've talked about before. Actual pets. Actual pets. I've done a few where I place pets with the uh, loved one because they've ha happened to die either days before that person or days after you know uh, and sometimes a, a lot of families have said to us that the pet just gr like grieved and grieved uh, like in and, and the die you know yeah and a lot of them are usually old people with older pets so they usually you know kind of follow their loved ones so yes i have put pets with them you have been asked to put pets down, to put them in, and of yeah, course... we don't do that. You're not yeah. a vet. You yeah. don't do that. Yeah, so we don't do that, so no. But, <laughs> None of that. Um, um, yes, and another one. Um, if, oh, two in a coffin. Oh, okay. You can have yeah. two people in one coffin. Yeah, you know... So you've done that before. Done that before with uh, mothers and babies and fathers and babies, you know, where the maybe... Both died in an accident, accident or, or something yeah. like that. So we've done that. And I've also put two adults into a coffin together. A husband and wife. Yeah, a husband and wife, which um, are obviously not in a standard coffin because you can't get two people into a side. But like in an oversized coffin, had two little, tiny little darling people that were together and the family wanted to keep them right together. And they died together. And they died within a day of each other. Oh. You know, so um, we placed them in the same coffin. We got a bigger coffin, so they, but they were tiny anyway. Sweet. And laid them like arm in arm, like oh, isn't that sweet? Together, yeah, beautiful. You know? So that, that but if if anything like that comes to mind, just ask the question of your local funeral yeah, home. I mean, absolutely. You know, you never know what can and can't be done. Some people, yeah. you know, might not have ever done it before, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean it can't be done. Yeah, and you have a funeral on your own home. You can. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. But you, you can, can actually have the but service But you can there. actually have the service yeah. at your home. Another thing mm -hmm. that you can do is, you know how we have services and we have funerals and we have the hearse. You don't have to use the hearse. <gasps> You've done that a few times. Yeah. we. You can use a vehicle of your choice. We have art, articulated trucks, uh, utes, uh, motorbikes coffin on a motorbike on the sidecar yeah yeah that's very popular the motorbikes and sidecar uh so you can if you've got a form of transport or can fit a coffin or a casket and you want to do that yourself we're happy to do that and not take the hurt so that's another one where you probably didn't know you can use a vehicle of well here in queensland australia you can. here in queensland yeah. australia yeah so thanks yeah. for that and i like them ones when they yeah. bring on vehicles it's them doing their thing and it's more them so like lots to, to think about no <laughs> and if you do have a specific request or something special that you're interested in having done for yourself or for a loved one talk to your family about it so it's not a shock to yeah. anyone when the time comes yeah, absolutely thanks Talks tracy thank you fabulous it's nice to see you all take care oh mm, merch it's down there yes we've have got our look. merchandise down here mm -hmm. oh, i think it's down there we keep doing this but it it's, it's on youtube anyway well when so. i look on you on my phone it's down there. is it uh -huh, it's okay like cool down there anyway. thanks guys Guys, till next time. Bye -bye. See ya. Bye.